Okay, Jess. So first question for you is um, uh, how long have you been back on U.S. soil? Um, maybe just kind of tell me how, how long it's been. I've been back on U.S. soil for uh, a week now. Uh, landed uh, last week, Tuesday night, in central Kazakhstan, and I was back here in Houston uh, landing at Ellington Field about 24 hours later. Uh-huh. And, you know, just kind of talking about the different number of um, space flights that you have, bet, that you have taken, uh, what is it like up in space? Maybe just talk about the experience, uh, what's been the worst and maybe the best experience for you. Well, uh, yeah, I've been up there four times now over uh, many years. The first time was in 2000. Uh, and every flight that I've been on was dedicated to the space station. The last three flights were long duration flights on the space station, each of a duration of about six months or so. Uh, so over those flights, uh, I had the opportunity to, uh, to see the space station in its different phases of assembly, uh, all the way from early on when it was just two modules before Expedition 1 got there. Uh, and then subsequently, about halfway through the assembly, uh, then uh, when we were finishing up the assembly and now when it's in full utilization mode and really seeing the, the science and the laboratory work um, and the studies of us, frankly, uh, just taken off uh, the way I had always hoped it would be. Uh, you never get tired of being up there. Uh, the, uh, the view of the Earth from that vantage point is just absolutely incredible. Um, and you, after all these years that you've been doing this, do you still get nervous uh, when flying up or, um, I guess, coming back down to, to, to Earth? I wouldn't say that I get nervous, uh, but we're all very much aware of the risks involved. We're very much aware of the effort put in by the team, the international partnership to mitigate those risks, uh, to understand when we find th things that are wrong or, or of issue, uh, which we do periodically. The teams do a very good job of addressing those things to get it corrected so that we continue to mitigate the risk. Uh, so I wouldn't say I get nervous. I, uh, most of us do take those uh, major uh, significant phases of flight, like getting there and getting back very seriously. And it's not over till it's over. And even though you, you're approaching the end of a six month stay on, on board the space station, you always have that um, deorbit burn and the entry and the landing under parachute uh, in front of you, and uh, you never cease to take that seriously. So it's not over till it's over and you're um, motionless on the ground. And then you can consider uh, being back home. Mm -hmm. And speaking about kind of the, the health aspect of it, um, does being in space affect your health or have you um, specifically studied that area when you're up in space? We're all guinea pigs when we're up there, so we spend a significant amount of time participating in, in experiments that study the effects on the human body, and that's uh, both pre-flight work as well as in-flight and now in post-flight. In fact, the last week, uh, most of my time has been spent uh, taking medical-related data um, from my body to try to uh, uh, quantify the effects of this uh, flight. Well, we're up there. Generally, we're all we all stay very healthy. We uh, go into quarantine before launch, uh, so we're not going to get the normal flus or viruses or, or bugs of different sorts on board space station. Uh, so we're in a very clean environment up there, and generally we stay healthy uh, for the time we're there. Mm -hmm. And when are you planning on coming back to uh, Winter, Wisconsin? I don't know yet. The, the dust has to settle now as I uh, kind of get reacclimated to being just back on the earth, um, spend some time with my family here uh, in Houston. Uh, but I'm sure I'll get up to Wisconsin at least uh, within the next year and a half or so. Usually it works out very well to go up there in the springtime before school is out, so I have a, the chance to, uh, to talk to students in the area. Uh, so uh, knowing the schedule now in the next six or eight months, um, it's unlikely I'll get up there, although it, it's possible. Uh, that's why I think maybe in about a year and a half. And speaking about um, kids, I guess, what is your advice for, for people or, or children who want to pursue a career in astronomy um, and becoming an astronaut? Well, what I tell young folks is to pursue the passions that develop uh, for them. You know, what areas uh, uh, attract their interest? Uh, where are their talents? Uh, 
what opportunities do they have? Uh, you hear, we all hear it often said that, that you can be anything you want to be, and uh, in my opinion, that's, that's really not true. We have to have certain abilities. Um, we have to develop passions uh, to, to be motivated to work hard towards something. And then, of course, the doors have to be open. Uh, we have to gain the opportunities uh, to do that. So if uh, a young person, especially, or a person of any age, has an interest in science, engineering, technology, I say pursue it with all your gusto. Uh, work hard and then uh, be ready when the opportunities open up to enter the doors uh, for those opportunities and continue to, to nurture those uh, passions and interests and, um, and, and use those gifts that you have to the best of your ability. Thanks again, Jeff, and uh, thanks for this opportunity and best of luck to you. Thank you very much.